the 36 strategies are a unique collection of ancient Chinese proverbs that describe some of the most cunning and subtle strategies ever devised by man. Whereas other Chinese military texts such as Sun Tzu The Art of War focus on military organization, leadership, and battlefield tactics. The 36 strategies are more suitably applied in the fields of politics, diplomacy, and espionage. These proverbs describe not only battlefield strategies, but tactics used in psychological warfare to undermine both the enemy's will to fight and his sanity. Tactics such as the double cross, the fry and job, and the bait and switch can be traced back through thousands of years of Chinese history to such proverbs as hide the dagger behind a smile, kill with a borrowed sword, and toss out a brick to attract jade, respectively. Though other Chinese military works of strategy have at least paid lip service to the Confucian notion of honor, the 36 strategies make no pretense of being anything but ruthless. For the Western reader, the 36 strategies offers timeless insights into the workings of human nature under conditions of extreme stress. Many of the proverbs are based on events that occurred during China's Warring States era 403 to 221 BC. This was a time so infamous that a later emperor banned history books of that era on the grounds that they contained accounts of such a devious nature, they would morally corrupt all who read them. Many of those accounts are presented here along with the exploits of some of the Orient's greatest generals, kings, emperors, and shoguns. One, deceive the sky to cross the ocean moving about in the darkness and shadows, occupying isolated places, or hiding behind screens will only attract suspicious attention. To lower an enemy's guard you must act in the open and hide your true intentions under the guise of common everyday activities. Two, besiege way to rescue Dao when the enemy is too strong to be attacked directly, then attack something he holds dear. Know that in all things he cannot be superior. Somewhere there is a gap in the armor, a weakness that can be attacked instead. The origins of this proverb is from the Warring States period. The state of Wei attacked Zhao and laid siege to its capital Handan. Zhao turned to Qi for help, but the Qi general Sun Bin determined it would be unwise to meet the army of Wei head on. So he instead attacked their capital at Liang. The army of Wei retreated in haste, and they were ambushed and defeated at the Battle of Killing, with the Wei General Peng Wan slain on the field. 3. Kill with a borrowed knife attack using the strength of another in a situation where using one's own strength is not favorable. Trick an ally into attacking him, bribe an official to turn traitor, or use the enemy's own strength against him. 4. Substitute leisure for labor it is an advantage to choose the time and place for battle. In this way you know when and where the battle will take place while your enemy does not. Encourage your enemy to expend his energy in futile quests while you conserve your strength. When he is exhausted and confused, you attack with energy and purpose. 5. Loot a house on fire when a country is beset by internal conflicts, when disease and famine ravage the population. When corruption and crime are rampant, then it will be unable to deal with an outside threat. This is the time to attack. 6. Make a sound in the east. Then strike in the west in any battle the element of surprise can provide an overwhelming advantage. Even when face to face with an enemy, Surprise can still be employed by attacking where he least expects it. To do this you must create an expectation in the enemy's mind through the use of a feint. 7. 
Create something from nothing, you use the same faint twice. Having reacted to the first and often the second faint as well, the enemy will be hesitant to react to a third faint. Therefore, the third faint is the actual attack, catching your enemy with his guard down. 8. Sneak through the passage of Chen Kang, attack the enemy with two convergent forces. The first is the direct attack, one that is obvious and for which the enemy prepares his defense. The second is the indirect, the attack sinister, that the enemy does not expect and which causes him to divide his forces at the last minute leading to confusion and disaster. This confrontation strategies proverb is literally translated as openly repair the gallery roads but sneak through the passage of Chen Kang. The phrase originated from the Chuhan contention, where Lu Bing retreated to the lands of Sichuan to prepare for a confrontation with Shang Yu. Once he was fully prepared, Lu Bang sent men to openly repair the gallery roads he had destroyed earlier, while secretly moving his troops towards Guangzhou through the small town of Chengkang instead. When Shang Yu received news of Lu Bang repairing the gallery roads, he dismissed the threat since he knew the repairs would take years to complete. This allowed Lu Bang to retake Guan by surprise and eventually led to his victory over Shang Yu and the birth of the Han Dynasty. 9. Watch the fires burning across the river delay entering the field of battle until all the other players have become exhausted fighting amongst themselves. Then go in full strength and pick up the pieces. 10. Hide and eat behind a smile charm and ingratiate yourself to your enemy. When you have gained his trust, you move against him in secret. 11. Sacrifices the plum tree to preserve the peach tree. There are circumstances in which you must sacrifice short-term objectives in order to gain the long-term goal. This is the scapegoat strategy whereby someone else suffers the consequences so that the rest do not. So Cell of the Three Kingdoms period demonstrated this strategy. During a siege, Cao's supplies ran low so he called in the supply captain and told him to dilute the rice with water to save grains. When the soldiers started to complain, Cao ordered for the captain to be killed. He would explain to his troops that the captain has been selling supplies to the enemy. This raises the army morale and they were victorious in a few more days. 12. Take the opportunity to pilfer a goat while carrying out your plans. Be flexible enough to take advantage of any opportunity that presents itself, however small, and avail yourself of any profit, however slight. They may have first been recorded by General Ten and handed down verbally or in manuscript form for centuries. It is believed that sometime in 13. Startle the snake by hitting the grass around it. When preparing for battle, do not alert your enemy to your intentions or give away your strategy prematurely. 14. Borrow another's corpse to resurrect the soul. Take an institution, a technology, or a method that has been forgotten or discarded and appropriate it for your own purpose. Revive something from the past by giving it a new purpose or to reinterpret and bring to life old ideas, customs, and traditions. 15. Entice the tiger to leave its mountain lair never directly attack an opponent whose advantage is derived from its position. Instead lure him away from his position thus separating him from his source of strength. 16. In order to capture, one must let loose. Cornered prey will often mount a final desperate attack. To prevent this you let the enemy believe he still has a chance for freedom. His will to fight is thus dampened by his desire to escape. When in the end the freedom is proven a falsehood the enemy's morale will be defeated and he will surrender without a fight. 17. Tossing out a brick to get a jade prepare a trap and lure your enemy into the trap by using bait. In war the bait is the illusion of an opportunity for gain. In life the bait is the illusion of wealth, power, and sex. This proverb is based on a story involving two famous poets of the Tang Dynasty. There was a great poet named Zhao Yu and another lesser poet by the name of Chang Jian. 
While Chen Jian was traveling in Suzhou, he heard news that Zhao Gu would be visiting a temple in the area. Cheng Jian wished to learn from the master poet, so he devised a plan and went to the temple in advance, then wrote a poem on the temple walls with only two of the four lines completed. Hoping Zhao Gu would see it and finish the poem, Zhao Gu acted as Cheng Jian foresaw, and from this story came the proverb 18. Defeat the enemy by capturing their chief if the enemy's army is strong but is allied to the commander only by money or threats, then take aim at the leader. If the commander falls the rest of the army will disperse or come over to your side. If, however, they are allied to the leader through loyalty then beware. The army can continue to fight on after his death out of vengeance. 19. Remove the firewood under the cooking pot when faced with an enemy too powerful to engage directly you must first weaken him by undermining his foundation and attacking his source of power. 20. Catch a fish while the water is disturbed before engaging your enemy's forces create confusion to weaken his perception and judgment. Do something unusual, strange and unexpected as this will arouse the enemy's suspicion and disrupt his thinking. A distracted enemy is thus more vulnerable. 21. Slough off the cicada's shell when you are in danger of being defeated, and your only chance is to escape and regroup, then create an illusion. While the enemy's attention is focused on this artifice, secretly remove your men leaving behind only the facade of your presence. 22. Shut the door to catch the thief if you have the chance to completely capture the enemy then you should do so thereby bringing the battle or war to a quick and lasting conclusion. To allow your enemy to escape plants the seeds for future conflict. But if they succeed in escaping, be wary of giving chase. 23. Befriend a distant state while attacking a neighbor it is known that nations that border each other become enemies while nations separated by distance and obstacles make better allies. When you are the strongest in one field, your greatest threat is from the second strongest in your field, not the strongest from another field. 24. Obtain safe passage to conquer the state of Guo borrow the resources of an ally to attack a common enemy. Once the enemy is defeated, use those resources to turn on the ally that lent you them in the first place. The 6 Advanced Strategies from the 36 Strategies of China 25 Replace the beams with rotten timbers disrupt the enemy's formations interfere with their methods of operations. Change the rules in which they are used the following go contrary to their standard training. In this way you remove the supporting pillar, the common link that makes a group of men an effective fighting force. 26. Point at the mulberry tree while cursing the locust tree to discipline, control, or warn others whose status or position excludes them from direct confrontation. Use analogy and innuendo. Without directly naming names, those accused cannot retaliate without revealing their complicity. 27. Play dumb hide behind the mask of a fool, a drunk, or a madman to create confusion about your intentions and motivations. Lure your opponent into underestimating your ability until, overconfident, he drops his guard. Then you may attack. 28. Remove the ladder when the enemy has ascended to the roof. With baits and deceptions lure your enemy into treacherous terrain, then cut off his lines of communication and avenue of escape. To save himself he must fight both your own forces and the elements of nature. 29. Deck the tree with false blossoms tying silk blossoms on a dead tree gives the illusion that the tree is healthy. Through the use of artifice and disguise make something of no value appear valuable, of no threat appear dangerous, of no use appear useful. 30. Make the host and the guest exchange roles defeat the enemy from within by infiltrating the enemy's camp under the guise of cooperation, surrender, or peace treaties. In this way you can discover his weakness and then, when the enemy's guard is relaxed, strike directly at the source of his strength. 31. The honey trap send your enemy beautiful women to cause discord within his camp. 
this strategy can work on three levels. First, the ruler becomes so enamored with the beauty that he neglects his duties and allows his vigilance to wane. Second, other males at court will begin to display a behavior that inflames minor differences hindering cooperation and destroying morale. Third, other females at court, motivated by jealousy and envy, begin to plot intrigues further exasperating the situation. Mm -hmm. Even though this has been done many times, many. perhaps the most famous historical example is Shi Shi who was sent to the state of Wu during the spring and autumn period 32. The empty fort strategy when the enemy is superior in numbers and your situation is such that you expect to be overrun at any moment, then drop all pretense of military preparedness and act casually. Unless the enemy has an accurate description of your situation this unusual behavior will arouse suspicion. With luck you will be dissuaded from attacking. From Desperate Situation Strategies 33. Let the enemy's own spy sow discord in the enemy camp undermine your enemy's ability to fight by secretly causing discord between him and his friends, allies, advisors, family, commanders, soldiers, and population. While he is preoccupied settling internal disputes his ability to attack or defend is compromised. 34. Inflict injury on oneself to win the enemy's trust pretending to be injured has two possible mm -hmm. applications. In the first, the enemy is lulled into relaxing his guard since he no longer considers you to be an immediate threat. The second is a way of ingratiating yourself to your enemy by pretending the injury was caused by a mutual enemy. This strategy was perhaps best demonstrated during the spring and autumn period. After his defeat by King Fu Chai of Wu, King Do Jian of Yu pretended to go to Wu to become a servant of Fu Chai. After gaining Fu Chai's trust, Hua Jian was allowed back to Yu. There he strengthened his military and in 482 BC while Fu Chai was trying to gain hegemony, he attacked and conquered the capital. Some years later in 478 BC, he annexed Wu and forced Fu Chai to commit suicide. 35. The strategy of combining tactics in important matters one should use several strategies applied simultaneously. Keep different plans operating in an overall scheme. In this manner, if any one strategy fails, you would still have several others to fall back on. 36. If all else fails, retreat. If it becomes obvious that your current course of action will lead to defeat, then retreat and regroup. When your side is losing, there are only three choices remaining. Surrender, compromise, or escape. Surrender is complete defeat, compromise is half defeat, but escape is not defeat. They may have first been recorded by General Ten and handed down verbally or in manuscript form for centuries. It is believed that sometime in the early Qing Dynasty some enterprising editor collected them together and published them in the form that comes down to us today.